I'm going to teach you how to code in JavaScript. You're about to learn all the basics of JavaScript programming by coding an RPG game line by line. This way of learning JavaScript will help you understand better how everything works together. So if you're following along, you'll be able to code each line right before I do based on my instructions. There is some starter code, so go to the link in the description and it should open up just like this, and then you can fork the REPL. This will give you my starter code. So just click fork REPL, and then you'll have to sign up or log in if you haven't already. So this is the starter code for the RPG. I've already provided the HTML and CSS, and we're now gonna create the JavaScript. So let's look what the starter code looks like. So when it's loaded in the browser, it looks like this. So you can see it's a text-based RPG, and it will give you a description of what's happening right here. And then you'll have a few different options in these buttons here. And it's gonna keep track of your experience points, your health, and your, co your gold. Now, right now, none of these buttons do anything. We still have to create that. And all of this is just hard coded right now. So you can see in the HTML, uh, we've already learned about how to set up an HTML page. So a lot of this should look familiar to you. So you can see we have a div full of the stats at this, that's this top div. And then we have a div for the controls. Those are these controls here. And then we have um, uh, this special one called monster stats. And this is not showing up yet because we're using CSS to hide that uh, for now. And we are, we're also, we're ex basically hiding this whole section, the whole monster stats section. And because uh, that will only appear if you're fighting a monster. And then we have our main text here. And you can see um, we have all these elements of the page, but nothing is happening yet because we haven't created our JavaScript. But let's look at the CSS really quick. So this is also provided, and it's basically just styling the page how you can see it. And one thing to look at is the monster stats, which I already talked about. Currently it's set as display none. It's only going to show the monster stats if you're fighting a monster. But we're not yet fighting a monster. We haven't even implemented that feature of the game yet. So now we'll go over to our JavaScript file. So if you want to just kind of explore the HTML and CSS a little more to understand it, you can, but we're now going to code this game from scratch. And you are going to code the game step-by-step step based on my instructions. So I'm going to just close this section here. I will zoom in just a little more so you can see the code a little better. So the first thing I'm gonna have you do is create a variable, but first let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna do var xp equals zero. And we'll zoom in one more time, and I can just put a semicolon here. So to keep track of the player's experience points, we've declared a variable called xp, and then we've assigned it to the starting value of zero. So I want you to follow this example and create another variable to keep track of health and start it at 100. So hopefully you're following along and you're trying it before I show you. So now I'm gonna show you var health equals 100. And so you can see we follow the same pattern. So this is, so we say it's a variable with VAR, then we say the variable name, and then we assign it with the equal sign and then this is the value that we're assigning. And then the semicolon here, in JavaScript, semicolons are optional. So you can use a semicolon to signify that it's at the end of a line, but you don't have to do it. But for now, we're going to use semicolons. So now, now that you have the pattern down, see if you can create another variable called gold and set it to 50. Okay, now we're gonna create another variable, and this is gonna be called current weapon, and we're gonna set it to zero. But when a name has two words, the convention is to use what's called lower camel case, which is how you do is the first word is all lowercase, and then the first letter of every preceding word is uppercase. So we'll do current, so we'll do var current weapon equals zero. So we've de been declaring all our variables with VAR. However, in modern JavaScript, it's better to use let 
instead of var. You can actually, there's three ways to, uh, to declare a variable. You can use var, let, or const. It's better to use let instead of var because it fixes a number of unusual behaviors with var that make it difficult to reason about. So let's change all the vars to let. And one quick way to do that in replet is I can highlight the first var and either do command or control D to hi highlight the next. And every time I press command or control D, it highlights the next instance of var. And now I'm actually using multiple cursors and I can just type in all at once. So I change them all to let. Now let's declare a variable without initializing it. So in every one of these examples, we've initialized the variable. That's this part where we set it to equal something. But you can create a var if you just don't put the equal a number or equal value, you can declare it without initializing it. So using the let keyword, let's declare a variable called fighting, but not set it equal to anything. So it's just like this, let fighting. Now we'll do the same thing with variables for monster health and inventory. It's common to just create all your variables up front at, toward the beginning of your program before you start using them. You, you wanna have them declared before you use them later in your program. So we'll do let monster health and let inventory. Now let's set the variable inventory to equal a string, stick. A strings are a group of characters surrounded by a quotation marks. So we'll do equal string or equal stick. And we use double quotation marks, but you can also use single quotation marks as long as the quotation marks are the same. Another thing you can also use back ticks, but you just have to make sure the at the beginning and the end are both the same. For now, we'll just use double quotation marks. Now, right now, the inventory is just a single thing, a stick. But the inventory can store multiple items. So we're going to change the value of inventory to be an array with the item stick, dagger, and sword. An array is basically just a, a list of different values. You can store multiple values in an array. And you, you create an array by putting brackets around the list of values. So it's just going to be like this. So the first item, we're going to put the bracket here, stick, and then we will have dagger and sword. And then we do an in bracket there. So now we've created an array of three strings. Now putting three items in this list was just an example. So for now, let's just start the player with just the stick. So we're gonna keep this as an array, but we only want one item. So we're gonna delete dagger and sword, th those items. And then uh, later we'll give the player an opportunity to add more items to the inventory. But it has to start out as an array if we wanna add elements to the array. In order to update HTML elements, on a web page, on an HTML page, you need to get references to them in your JavaScript code. So here's an example. This is not the one we're using. I'm just giving you this as an example where we can, this will get a reference to the HTML element with an ID of L because this is the CSS selector for ID and it's going to have the ID of EL. And we're going to store that, that HTML element in a variable called L. What I want you to do is update this to get a reference to the HTML, the HTML element with the ID of button one and assign it to a variable with the name button one. So basically we're just going to do button one and button one. Let's just look over at our HTML really quick so you can see where that is. If we go to the HTML and we can see here uh, button ID of button one, that's this one where it says go to store. So now we're getting access to this element and we can do things to it. Like we can change the text in the element or basically do whatever we want using JavaScript once we have a reference to that element. So we'll go back to our JavaScript. And now what we're gonna do is change this let to const. So I already told you earlier that you can create a variable with var, let, or const. So var, allows the most changing, basically. So, so you, you can basically do anything you want with a var later, but you may, but that could 
open yourself up to bugs. And const, it means that it is the least amount of changing. Once you declare a variable as a const, you cannot update it. So we do, we are gonna want to update the XP, the health, the gold, but now once we get access to this button, we're never going to want to update this variable. We're not going to assign button one to button two. It's always gonna be button one. So that's why we can use const. Uh, you ba you want to use const anytime you are creating a variable that should never change. If the value is never going to change, you declare the variable with const because it's a constant. So now we want to we want to get access to a bunch of other elements on the website. We're going to basically get access to elements with all of these different IDs. I'm just going to about to paste it in here, but you can give it a try yourself if you want first. Okay, so we got these all pasted in. So basically we have access to all the different elements on our website that we want to update using JavaScript. So now instead of typing this whole thing in every time, document.querySelector and then the ID, we can just refer to the variable. Okay, now we're going to make a comment to describe what the next few lines of code will do. Comments can be written with either two forward slashes or with a multi-line sequence. So if you're going to make comments on one line, it can just be two forward slashes and you can do comment. Or if you want to make a multi-line comment, you can do slash star at the beginning and star slash at the end. And then you can say, this is a comment. And then you can see that the comment, it, the code editor automatically makes comments gray. And because this is a multi-line comment, you can see it's all gray here. So basically we just want a single comment that's going to say initialize buttons. So now this indicates what the next part of code will do. So let's designate what the first button in the HTML does by setting the onClick property of button one. And we're going to set that property to the function name go to store. So here's an example of how you would do it for a different button. So this is just a, a generic button. And if you want to make the button open a pro call the function open program, you could do it like this. But we're, we're trying to make it so button one will call the go store function, which is a function we'll create later. So basically, it's gonna be button one and just go store. And so we can see that the button one already says go to store. So now when we click the button one, it's gonna call this function, which is going to make our game go to the store in the game. Now we're just gonna follow the same example to set the on click property of button two and button three to be go cave and fight dragon. So I can just actually copy this line, paste it in here. So this will be button two, button three, and it'll be go cave and fight dragon. Now we're going to create a function. So we already made it so these functions will be called when you click the buttons, but let's now create uh, these functions that are called. Now functions are, are just a group of, a, a section of code that you can run over and over again every time you call that function. So it's a way to repeat, easily repeat code. So every time that call, function is called, it, it just runs all those lines of code in that function. So well, let me show you how you would just create a generic function. So see, you always start with the word, the keyword function, and then you do a space, and then you put the function name, which can be anything. And you're always gonna have two brackets, or two uh, parentheses, and then these curly bra brackets. And inside the curly brackets are where you put the code that's going to run when you call the function. So uh, right now, instead of creating the function called function name, we're gonna create a function called go store. So that's pretty simple, you just do go store. That's what it's called now. Okay, now let's make this function do something. We're just going to basically do some example code really quick, but we're gonna make the go store function output the message going to store to the web console. So basically we do console.log and then in parentheses, we put the string 
going to store, just like this. Console.log, so it's gonna log it to the web console, going to store. And that's it, now we have something that this function will do. And now we've actually done enough to, to test our program out. So what, now when we click go to store, it's going to put going to store in the console. Now, where's the console? It's not this, this isn't the console. This is part of the website. So to get to the console, you can do it either from your browser's dev tools or right in Replit, we can click this this um, thing, this uh, this wrench here, toggle developer tools. And now down here, we have our console. So click the run button. And now we we do get the this go cave is not defined because we haven't created it yet, but we still should, it still should work. I'll click go to store and it says going to store right in the console. So let's create a go cave function that will console, oh, that will log to the console going to cave. So I can just copy this and just paste and put go cave, going to cave. And then we'll just create a fight dragon function that will say fighting dragon. So we'll just print, uh, paste in another one here and this will be called fight dragon. And it'll say fighting dragon. And now we should be able to run this and we don't have to get an error down here because all the functions are defined. So go to store, go to cave, and fight dragon. We can see in the console those are appearing. Okay, well let's do some refactoring. Refactoring is when you change code to improve code or make it better that you've already created. So we're going to change the go to store function. Uh, this was just kind of to demo it. We're not actually going to um, console going to store and we're not going to log that to the console because when people are playing the game they won't actually be seeing the console so when we when a player clicks the go to store button the buttons and text in the game should change so what's in these buttons should change and what's in this text up here it should tell you what's happening at the store right down here so we're going to remove the console.log we're going to remove this and we're gonna add a new line of code inside the function that updates the text of button one. So it says, buy 10 health for 10 gold. So I'm gonna uh, delete that. And then let me just show a quick example. We're not gonna use this one, but this is how you would update the text of a button. Button dot enter text and then set what it equals. And remember, we're gonna make the button one say, Buy ten gold, buy ten health for ten gold. So we just change this to button one, and then we just change the text in here. The inner text is now going to be buy ten health, and then we'll just put it in parentheses ten gold. Now we also want the text of button two to say buy weapon thirty gold, and the the text of button three to say go to town square. So basically, you're going to go back to where you began. So I can just copy this. And then we'll do button two, button three, and then this will say buy weapon for 30 gold and go to town square. So now that the text on these buttons have changed, the on click properties on the buttons should change. So inside the go store function, we'll update the on click property of all three buttons. The new function should be buy health, buy weapon, and go town. And you should already know enough right now to be able to do that all on your own. But basically I can just copy the, the initializing these buttons and then Put it here now see how it's not indented the same amount um, now indent indenting is actually optional in JavaScript it's just to make sure you, that your code is more readable but it's still good to do any th time something's in a block of code in these curly braces you want to indent it the same amount even though it doesn't actually impact how your code's working so I'm going to highlight everything and now I can just press tab and will indent everything at once so the button one is now going to say by health uh, button two, or is not gonna go to, not say, um, 
by weapon, this is the function that's going to be called, and then go town. Now, uh, we're changing the inner text of the buttons, but we also want to change the inner text of this section here. That's the, the property, this is the, has the ID of text. And we want to say, you enter the store. So I'm just going to copy this again and just say text. You enter the store. And now let's create three new empty functions called by health, by weapon, and go town. So in order to create a function, you have to use the keyword function by health, parentheses, and that's just going to be an empty function. And then we'll do another one and another one. So by weapon and go town. And at this point, we can test it out. So if I click go store, I'm going to just move this here. So you can the buttons still st stay in a, in a row here. So you enter the store. And unfortunately, we can't go back to the town yet. But uh, we were able to enter the store. If I refresh this, I can try it again. Go store. You enter the store. OK, so every time you click a button, it's basically going to do all these things. It's going to update the button one, update button two, update button three, and then change the functions for the buttons. And it's going to put some new text here. So we're going to um, move this go town function to be the first function. And then we're just going to copy all this and put it in that function. So I'm going to just do command X or control X to cut it. And then we'll put it right here, command or control V. And this time I'll do control or command C and then I'm just going to paste it. And basically when you go to the town, uh, we want all this to be what we started off with. All the text we started off with is what's in the town and all the click, the on clicks we started off with was what, what we want the town to have. So I'm just going to just paste in the updated, uh, the updated code with go to store, go to cave, fight dragon. And you can see these three are the same as these three. But instead of the text being you enter the store, now we're going to say you are in the town square. You see a sign that says store. You see a sign that says store. Well, this should be actually in quotation marks because it's what it says. So let's put quotation marks around the word store. So now we can see based on what uh, the color of the this that something's wrong. Um, so usually strings are this uh, brownish color, but it's switching to black and we have these squiggly lines because you can't put quotation marks inside a string. Well, actually you can't, I'm gonna show you how. If we put a backslash before each one, you can see now it all is the right color. So putting this backslash, this is called escaping. And it, it's signifying that the next character after that slash is not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be the end of the string. It's supposed to be literally rendered. So there's quite a few different special characters that you can you that you can put in with escaping the character like that. So you may have noticed that there's some repetition in our code. So if we look at this, all this code looks very similar to all this code. And when you have repetition in code, it's a sign that you need a new function. So above the go town function, let's add another function. We'll create an empty function called update. This time the function should take a parameter named location. So data can be passed into the function when it's called. A parameter is a variable that you just put in the parentheses. So let me show you what that looks like. So we have the function called update, and this is the parameter. We can now pass in, when we call the function, we can pass in the location. So let's create a new const here called locations, and we're gonna set it equal to an empty array. This will be used to store all the data for the locations in the game. 
Now, arrays can store any data type, including objects. Objects are similar to arrays, except that instead of using indexes to access and modify their data, you access the data in objects through what are called properties. So inside the locations array, we'll add an empty object using curly braces. Uh, so basically, we just put these two curly braces in here. So now inside the array, in there's one item, which is this empty object. And the object is going to consist of key value pairs. So let me just give you another example of an object. So here is an, an array that has an object, there are curly braces, and there's one key value pair. The name is the key, the value is Quincy Larson. So we're not going to use this, this is just an example. So here, now we're going to create a property called name, or the property is also another name for a key. So the property name called name with the value of town square. So we'll just put these onto new lines like in the other example we saw. And then I will do name town square. So now after the name property, we're going to put a comma. And then on the next line, we're going to add a property named button text that has a value of an empty array. But since button text is two words instead of name is just one word, we're going to need to put quotation marks around it. So I hope you're following along and you've tried this. So uh, as just as a reminder, you should be trying everything right before I show you, and that will help you learn this on your own. So we're going to do button text, and then we're going to just set that to an empty array. Oh, and like I said, we do need a comma here. So each element in the object, each uh, each key value pair in the object is separated by a comma. So we have two two elements in this object. Okay, so now this button text inside this array, we're going to make it a, a list of three strings. We're gonna, there's gonna be three elements inside the array, and it's going to be the button text that we see in the go town function. Go to store, go to cave, and fight dragon. So I'll just actually paste that in there just like that. And now we're going to add another property in the object with the name button functions, and the value should be an array containing the three on-click functions, the go store, go k, fight dragon. And you see these aren't strings, so they will not be strings in the array either. So it should look just like that. Now we'll just add one final property called text, and it will be the text from here. You are in the town, you see a sign that says store. Just like that. The locations array currently has one element which is an object. Within the array and after the object's final curly brace, we'll add a comma, and on the next line within the array, we'll add another object with all the same properties as the first object. We'll keep the property names the same on the second object, but change all the property values to the information from the go store function. And we'll set the property name to store. So I'll just go up here and I'll just paste it in to make it a little quicker here. So now we have an element in this array that's an object containing all the information from the go store function. Now we can consolidate the code inside the go town and go store functions. So we'll copy the code inside the go town function and paste it in the update function. Then we'll delete all the code inside the go town and go store functions. So we're gonna come down here. So here's where we're going to copy that and put it right in the update function. And then we don't need this code here now. And then we don't need this code. Okay, so instead of assigning the inner text and the, the on click like we're doing now, the update function will now use data from the location that's passed into it first data needs to be passed into the update function. So inside the go town function, we'll call the update function. So to call a function, you just put the name and then parentheses after it. So we now have called the update function. So when you call the go town function, it will now call the update function. 
and we're not just going to call the function. When we call the function, we need to pass in an argument. See, it accepts a location. When we call the function, we can pass in a location. So here we're going to pass in the locations array. Just like that. And so this is the locations array right up here. So the locations array actually contains two locations, the town square and the store. Currently, the entire array with both locations is being passed into the update function. But we just want to pass in the first element of the locations array. So we can do that by putting brackets at the end and putting a zero, just like this. So this is going to pass in the first element in the array because in programming, counting starts as, at zero. So zero is the first element, one is the second element, two is the third element, and so on. So when you put the name of an array and then use these brackets and then put a number in those brackets, that's how you specify a single element in the array. So now that the goTown function calls the update function with the first element of the locations array, it's time to use that location information to update the inner text and on click properties. Inside the update function, Let's change the button one dot inner text, this one right here, to equal the the button text, the the location button text. So we can do it like this. Uh, we'll get the we'll use location. That's what was passed in, and then we'll use brackets just like before, but to specify a specific part of the of the object, um, we're going to do do it just like this. See how we have button text, we want that button text. So that's what we're going to put. I just copy that, I'm gonna paste it in here. So the location with brackets button text, that's how we access a specific element in an object. And you can see this just happens to be an array. And we already know how to access a certain element in an array, which is the same way. We, we use brackets again, and we put the index number. In this case, index zero. So the location gets us this whole thing, and then we put the bracket button text, that gets us this, and then we put bracket zero, that gets us this. So we've now accessed the go to store. So now let's update this, these next two items using this same pattern. So I'll just paste these in, and then we can just do element at index one, element at index two. So the first, second, and third element. Now we can just use the same pattern for the on click of the buttons. So I'm just going to paste this in, but instead of button text, it's going to be button functions. So I'll just copy the word functions, button functions, and it's still gonna be zero again, because the first item here. So let's update go, the go cave. Fight dragon, zero, one, two. And then finally, we'll update the text.inner text to also get from locations. Now, there's, there's two ways we can do this. We've been using bracket location, which is just like this, location text. So we could use this notation, but we can also use dot notation. So to use dot notation, there's just two ways to do it. We'll do dot text. So we can do location dot, and then you just put the word here. Now this only works if it's a single word like this. Uh, when your uh, key is two words, like button functions, you have to use bracket notation. But for the text, we can just use the dot notation. Okay, now we'll just update the go store function. And so the code should look basically the same as the go town function, except the number zero should be changed to one. So let's just do that really quick. And then it will be time to test our game. So up to locations one. And now I'll click run. And we should be able to move between the store. Oh good, see, it has the information for the buttons. We have you enter the store. I can go back to the town square. You are now in the town square. You see a sign that says store. So now we can move between the town square and the store. If we press these other buttons, nothing happens. We haven't done that quite yet, but this game is starting to work. 
now I'm just going to shrink this a little bit and we're going to add a third object in the locations array. And it's going to have the same properties as the other two objects. The name will be cave and then the button text is going to be fight slime, fight fang beast and go to town square. And then the button functions, we're going to have some new functions, fight slime, fight beast and go town. And then the text is just going to be, you enter the cave, you see some monsters. So maybe you try that on your own. I'm just going to paste it in here. See, we have the cave with uh, new button text here and then new button functions. A few of these we still have to create. And you enter the cave, you see some monsters. So now we'll just update the go cave function with using our calling our update function. And let's create some more empty functions here it was for the fight slime and fight beast. So fight slime. So now that the store and cave locations are complete, we'll code the actions at those locations. So first we'll do the buy health function. So inside the buy health function, set gold to equal gold minus 10. So it's just like this, gold equals gold minus 10. And you can see we're getting the gold from our variable that we've already said we start with 50 gold. But when you buy health, we're going to subtract 10 from the gold. And if we're subtracting 10 from the gold, we need to give some health. So let's add 10 to the health. So that's pretty straightforward, but let me tell you about a quicker way you can do something like this. So there's a shorthand way to add or subtract from a variable called compound assignment. The long way to add it is like this, but there's a short way where you can do gold plus, min or where you can do gold minus equals 10. So uh, let me show you, if we just do minus equals 10, that's just the shorthand of subtracting 10 from whatever that value is and assigning the new value to the value. So this basically does the same thing as before. So let's change this to also use the compound assignment. So it's just going to be health plus equals 10. So uh, the line that I change this from does the same thing as the line that I change it to. Okay, now that the golden health value variables have been updated, we need to update the values displayed on the screen. So if we look at what's being displayed here, we have health 100, gold 50. Well, we've changed the variables, but it didn't actually change anything on the screen. So how can we do that? Well, we can use the, we can set the inner text to gold. So for the gold text, that inner text, let's set to gold. And we'll use the same thing for health text. So, so gold text, that inner text equals gold, health text, that inner text equals health. So we can update the text on the screen. So what if the player doesn't have enough gold to buy health? Well, let's put the code in this buy health function. We're going to put all this code inside an if statement. So let me just show you how to do that. So I'm going to add an extra line here and it's going to say if, and we want to say if condition, We'll update that later. And then I'm going to put curly braces, just like we have the curl. It's kind of looks similar to a function where we have something in parentheses and then we have the curly braces. I'm going to copy this or I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put it here. Let me get the tabs correct. Okay, so this is an if statement. So if something is true, we haven't specified what we want to be true at though, but if something is true, then we do all these things right here. If this is not true, then all this code will be skipped. This is called a conditional. So it's code that you only want to run in a certain circumstance. In this case, the circumstance is we want to check if the amount of gold the player has is greater than or equal to 10. So we just have to do gold is greater than or equal to 10. So if this is true, if the variable is equal to greater than or equal to 10, then we can buy health. If not, all this will be skipped and we cannot buy health. 
And you can also do, um, instead of just greater than, it can just be, instead of greater than or equal to, it could be greater than, it could be less than. And so there's a few different conditional operators that you can use, but we're just using greater than or equal to. So if you want code to run only if this is false, then we can put an else statement. So an else statement is just like this, else, and then we put curly braces. So any code in these curly braces will run if this is false. So if it's true, we run this code. If it's false, we run this code. So if the player doesn't have enough money to buy health, we'll inform the player. We'll set the text that inner text to, you do not have enough gold to buy health. Just like that. Okay, so before we write the code for the buy weapon function, we'll use const to create a weapons variable right above the locations array and set it to an empty array. So I'm gonna go up here, we got the locations array, and then I'm going to do const weapons equals empty array. And just like in the locations array, all the elements in the weapons array will be objects. So we'll add four objects to the weapons array each with two properties. The properties are name and power. So the first should be, uh, should be the name stick with power set to five, then dagger with power set to 30, claw hammer with power of 50, and finally sword with power of 100. So if you do all that, it will look like this. So we can see we have all the different weapons. And just so you know, these don't all have to be on different lines. This whole thing could actually just be one line of code, but spacing things out this way just makes it more easily readable for humans. So let's go back down to the buy weapons function. And we'll, we wanna check if gold is greater than or equal to 30. So just like that. And we're gonna put some code in this if statement if that's true. The first thing is we're going to set gold to equal 30 less than its current value. So gold minus equal 30. And you can see every once in a while I forget the semicolons. And it, it is, they are optional. It's just usually people will just use, always use semicolons or never use semicolons. So if we go back up to the top, we can see that the value of current weapon uh, is going to correspond to an index in the weapons array. You start with the weapon at index zero, that's stick. So let's go back down to buy weapon. And the player starts with a stick, but in the buy weapons function, we wanna add one to current weapon, since the user is buying the next weapon in the weapons array. So we just do current, weapon plus equals one. Oh, and I, this was supposed to be an equal sign that you probably heard me say it and you probably noticed, but yeah, minus equal 30. So just how there was a shortcut, when we did, at first we did gold equals gold minus 30, and then we did a shortcut to do gold minus equals 30. Since it's so common to want to increment by one or decrement by one, so add one or subtract one, there's a shortcut just for doing that. So whenever you wanna do current weapon plus equals one or current weapon equals current weapon plus one, here's the shortcut, just current weapon plus plus. So doing plus plus just adds one to the current weapon. And now we'll update the inner text property of gold text and text, text is going to equal, you now have a new weapon. So it should just look like this. Now let's tell the player what weapon they bought. So in between the two lines that we just wrote, in between these two, we're going to add a new line. We're gonna use let to initialize a new variable called new weapon and set new weapon to equal weapons. So new let new weapon equals weapons. So right now we're just making it equal the entire array. But now we're going to add brackets so we can get to an individual weapon, and we're going to set it to the current weapon. 
So instead of just putting a number here, we can put a variable. And this is going to be the index of a certain weapon in the weapon array, weapons array. But we don't want just the entire weapon, we just want the name. So we can use dot notation and do dot name. And now let's see how we can insert variables into a string. We can do that with the concatenation operator, which is actually just a plus symbol. So we're going to update this string to at the end of a string, add a plus, and then put the, the new weapon. So we want this to say, you now have a, and then put the new weapon. So basically it's going to be like this. You now have a, and then I will do plus new weapon. So this is outside of the string and we have to make sure we put the, the space here. So it's gonna put in a space, a new weapon, but we also want a period at the end. So we're going to have to concatenate a period at the end, you now have it, and then it's going to show the new weapon. So way back at the beginning, we made this variable called inventory. And the inventory, it starts off with just a stick. So what we wanna do is add, a, add the new weapon onto the end of the inventory, because you still keep the inventory, what you already have, we'll still keep the stick, but if you buy a new weapon, now you should have the next weapon in your inventory. And you can do that by using dot push. So we just do inventory dot push, and then we put the, the new weapon in parentheses. It's just like this. We'll go back down here, and then we will, where is it? Inventory dot push new weapon. So we've added that to the inventory. So, so far, anytime that inner text was updated, the old text was completely erased. But this time, let's use the plus equal operator instead of the equal operator, so we can add text to the, the end of text.inner text. And we're gonna add the text. So we're gonna still, we're gonna have this text, but then the next line, we are going to add a string in your inventory, you have, and then we are going to put what we have in our inventory. So it's basically going to look like this, text.intertext plus equals, and then we're gonna have a space because we wanna have space after this period, and in your inventory you have, and then I can just put inventory. Now this is an array, and whenever you print out an array, it's just going to put every element in the array separated with a comma. Okay, now we just want an else statement, and the else, if it's just gonna say, we're gonna update the inner text to say, you do not have enough gold to buy a weapon. Just like that. Once a player has the best weapon, they can't buy another one. So let's wrap all this code in the buy weapon function inside another if statement. So basically it'll be a nest, we'll have an if statement inside another if statement. This is called nested if statements. So this outer if statement, the condition should check if current weapon is less than three, which is the index of the last weapon. So I'm going to add this if statement here. Now let me tab everything over and then put another curly brace here. If I move this over, now we can see everything. Okay, so if, oh wait, this has to be lined up right there. Okay, so if current weapon is less than three, then we'll do all that. So at some point in the future, you may want to add more weapons. So instead of checking if current weapon is less than three, like this, let's check if current weapon is less than the length of the weapon's array. So we just have to put the name of the array dot length. So just like this, weapons dot length. Well, not quite. This is not quite what we need to do because we've now introduced an error. The current weapon variable is the array index. Array indexing starts at zero. So the index of the last element in the array is one less than the length of the array. So in this if statement, let's change weapons dot length to weapons dot length minus one. And if the user can't buy a weapon, we'll update the inner text to say you already have the most powerful weapon. So here we go. 
else, inner text, sex and inner text, you already have the most powerful weapon. And once a player has the most powerful weapon, we'll give them the ability to sell their older weapons back. So in the else statement, we'll set button 2 dot inner text to equal sell weapon for 15 gold. And we'll set button 2 dot on click to the function name sell weapon. So just like that. So you already have the most powerful weapon and then the button is going to change. And then you can, if you click it, it will do sell weapon. So after the buy weapon function, let's create an empty function called sell weapon. So first of all, players should not be able to sell their only weapon. So inside the sell weapon function, we'll add an if statement with a condition that checks if the length of the inventory array is greater than one. Okay, and then inside this statement, we'll set goal to equal 15 more than its current value and update gold.innerText to the new value. Okay, now let's set use the let keyword to create a variable named current weapon, but we won't set it to anything yet. And if you notice, if you remember, we already have a current weapon up here. We have already have a current weapon that we've used in this in another function. We've used it in the buy weapon function. But since we've created, since the let keyword is used instead of var, this new version of current weapon is scoped only to this if statement. So at the close of the if statement, once the if statement is over, then the old version of current weapon will be used again. So this will, will, can't come out of the if statement because we use let. If we use var, then it would be able to be used outside of the if statement. We're gonna remove the first element from the inventory array and put it into this current weapon variable. We're going to use the dot shift method. So it's gonna be like this, equals, equals inventory dot shift. Okay, just like that. So shift is now removing the first element from the array and returning it into this variable. And now we'll just set the inner text to you sold a and then put the current weapon. So it's just gonna look like this, you sold a plus current weapon, plus period. Now we can use the plus equal operator to add to the inner text and add the string in your inventory you have, and then add the inventory variable at the end of the string. Just like that. So now let's add code so that if the length of the inventory is not more than one, a text message appears that says, don't sell your only weapon. So we can just do that with an else. So now we'll start working on fighting monsters. Let's organize the code by moving the fight dragon function to the bottom of the code near the other fight functions. So I'll just go to uh, fight dragon, uh, cut it, and then we'll just put it here. So now we have all the, the monster fighting functions all together. Now below where the weapons variable is declared, so we have the weapons here, we're going to create another array called monsters. And in the monsters, we are going to uh, set the monsters with uh, three different monsters that each have a name, a level, and a health. Now, this time I'll just show you. Okay, so see, we have the monster slime at level two, health 15, the fang beast, level 8, health 60, and the dragon, level 20, and health 300. And fighting each type of monster will be very similar. So all three fighting functions will call a function named go fight. So at the end of the code, let's add an empty function named go fight. So go down here, I can just copy this function, and this will be called go fight. So inside the fight slime function, we'll set fighting to equal zero, which is the index of the slime in the monsters array. And then we'll call the go fight function. So just like this, fighting equals zero, go fight. And then we'll do the same for fight beasts and fight dragons. So this is gonna be one 
and then we're gonna we don't need the console.log and this is going to be two. So zero one two. And now we need a new location in the locations array. And uh, it's going to have the same properties as the other objects in the array. We'll set name to fight. The button text is attack, dodge, and run. And the button functions are attack, dodge, and go town. And we'll set the text to you are fighting a monster. So just like that. And now we have an attack and a dodge. We need two more functions. Let's, so let's create those functions at the very end here. So we have attack and dodge. So in the go fight function, let's update and pass in the location of the, the fighting location. So just like that. Next in the go kite fight function, we'll set monster health to equal the health of the current monster. You can try to figure that out first, or you can just wait for me to show you how to do it. So monster health equal monsters. So that'll be from the list of monsters. And then we have the index of what monster we're fighting, like say it was two. And then we're going to get the health. So it's using the combination of bracket and dot notation. Okay, let's go look back at the HTML really quick. If you remember from when we talked about this, uh, the HTML earlier, we have this monster stats. And the monster stats has a style of display none. So it's hidden, it's not showing up. But when we're fighting a monster, we want the monster stats to show up. So we're going to display the monster stats HTML element by updating its CSS display property to equal block. So you just basically do the element dot style dot display equal block. So it should just look like this. See monster stats dot style dot display. And this is if if we use an element dot style, this is how we can update CSS styles through JavaScript. Now let's set the inner text property the mo of the monster name text to equal the, the name of the monster we're fighting and the inner text, inner text property of the monster health text to equal the monster health. So it should look just like this. So the name text is monsters, the monster that we're fighting, the name property, and then the monster health. We already got that from up here. So we'll build out the attack function now. For the first line in the attack function, let's update the text message to say the monster attacks, but use the actual monster name of what the monster of which monster is attacking. So it's just gonna be like this: the monster. That's how we get the name attacks. Okay, now we'll use the plus equal operator to append more text to text that inner text. We'll add the text: you attack it with your and then it'll say the weapon name. So that's gonna be just like this. We have the plus equals, we have the space here. So we'll have a space out of this period. You attack it with your, and then we use string concatenation to get the, the weapon name here. Now, now let's set the health to equal health minus the monster's level. And you can get the monster's level, um, very similar to this, but instead of name, it's just going to be level. So it's just like that. Now we'll set the monster health to monster health minus the power of the current weapon. Okay, so when you attack, you get damage, the monster gets damage. And then at the end of the line, we'll add a random number between one and the value of XP, that's the experience. So, so let me show you, I'll just paste that in here so you can see what that looks like. So. We're subtracting from the monster health, the power of the weapon, plus just some random amount based on the experience. So uh, math.random is going to create a random number between zero and one. And then it will multiply it by the experience points. And then math.floor will round down, round down to the nearest whole number. So we'll get this all rounded down to the nearest whole number and then add one. So 
basically that's the formula for getting a random number between 1 and the value of XP. And we'll just update the inner text of the health and monster health. And then we'll check if health is less than or equal to 0. If it is, we'll call the lose function. So then remember, see if you can try to figure out this stuff before I show you, but that's just like this. If health is less than or equal to zero, lose. So we've talked about if and else statements. An else statement can be conditional with an else if statement. So at the end of the if statement, let's add an else if statement to check if monster health is less than or equal to zero. And if it is, we'll call the defeat monster function. So that just looks like this. So normally it's else and then we have a curly brace here, but now we're doing else if, and we can put another if statement and then defeat monster. So if this, else, then we'll do, do another if statement. We'll only go to this if statement if this one is not true. So if we haven't lost, then we'll check if the monster has lost. If the monster's health is lower, we'll call it defeat monster. So we'll just have to add those two empty functions for defeat monster and lose. Okay, there we go. And inside the dodge function, let's set text enter text to you dodge the attack from and then put the monster's name. So just like that, you dodge the attack from and then monsters, and then we get the monster who we're fighting, the name, and then the period. And then we can update the defeat monsters function. So inside this defeat monsters function, we're, we're gonna set gold to equal the monsters level times 6.7, but then we wanna round that all down to the nearest whole number. So just like this, gold plus equals, and the, so we're gonna add this, this new amount of gold, which is gonna be the level times 6.7, and then round down to the nearest whole number. Then we'll set XP to equal XP, plus the monster's level. And now we just have to update the inner text on the screen. And finally, we'll finish this function by calling the update function and pass in locations for. So update locations for. So that's obviously a brand new location that we're gonna have to add to the location section because that's actually the fifth location uh, index for. And so we're gonna add a new location. What we're going to have the same properties as all the other objects. The name is kill monster. The button text is go to town square, go to town square and go to town square because there's only one thing you can do after you kill a monster. And then the button functions, go town, go town, go town. And the text, the monster screams arg as it dies. You gain experience and find gold. So we have all that updated for what happens after you kill a monster. Now, where says the monster screams arg here? If you're saying something, there should be quotes around it. So let's add quotes around it. We already learned about escaping quotes, but there's another way you can include quote marks is if the outer quotes are a different type than the inner quotes. So if we want to have the inner quotes be double quotes, we can make the outer quotes single quotes. So let's do that. So now you can see the color all looks correct. So it, we're using the single quotes at the beginning and the end so we can use the double quotes in the middle. And that, now these will appear and we don't have to escape them. They'll actually appear, this text will appear as with the quotation marks. And let's just add another location for when you lose. Name lose, button text is just all three says replay, question mark, button functions are just restart and it's just gonna say, you die. So it's gonna look just like that. So there's only three options that can happen. The, the buttons all say the same thing and the button functions are all the same. So after a monster is defeated, the monster stat box should no longer display. So on the first line of the update function, let's add that the monster stat style display is none. So every time it updates, it's just gonna make sure that the display box goes away, the monster stats box goes away. So it's just here, and I'll just put in there. So whenever you go to a new location, the monster stats will no longer show up. 
Okay, now let's go use the, the loot. We have the loose function at the bottom. So let's make it go to the correct location. Update. Locations. Five. And now at the end, we're going to make a restart function. So after you lose, you may want to restart. And we just want to set all the initial variables back to their initial settings. And then we want to go to the town. So let's go all the way back to the bottom and create that function. So then we got restart and see we're setting all the variables back to how they were at the very beginning. We're making sure the inner text of all these things on the screen are the correct values. And then we go to town. Okay, now let's make an update to the attack function. Inside the attack function, we're gonna update the contents of the else if statement. This is, which is this statement right here. So we're, we're gonna update the contents here. Instead of calling the defeat mon fun instead of calling the defeat monster function right, right away, we'll create an if statement with an else statement. If the player is fighting the dragon, which is if fighting equals two, then we'll call the win game function. Else, we'll call the defeat monster function. So let me show you what that looks like. And we're going to talk about something new, which is this opera. So if fighting equals two, win game, else defeat monster. So here, uh, you never just want to use a single equal sign because a single equal sign is an equality operator. You either want to use the double equal sign or the triple equal sign. If, if you want to compare two things, if you want to see if one thing equals another thing as far as comparing, you're going to, you're going to use double or e, triple equal sign. And so double equal sign, the double equal operator will compare for equality after doing any necessary type conversions, and the triple equal operator will not do the conversions. So two values have to be the exact same type. So it's often safer to use the triple equal sign because it's not going to do any conversions to test the equality. And this is the perfect time to talk about the ternary operator, or sometimes called the conditional operator. It's basically can be used to do a one line if else expression. I'm just gonna show you this, paste in some example code, which we're gonna delete. So the exam, here's the example code. So if age is greater than or equal to 18, adult function, else kid function. We can simplify this using the ternary operator. So basically you put the, what's in the if statement right here, and then we have a question mark. And this would be the if true, and then you will put a colon, and this is else. So this is gonna be the if true, this is the else. So the key things that we see here are the question mark and the colon. So basically it's a one line if else statement when you only need, it, they're, they're very helpful if you only need to do one thing in the if and one thing in the else, which is exactly what we have up here. So I'm gonna delete this, and we're gonna update this code to use a ternary statement. So it's just going to look like this. So basically it simplifies things quite a bit. If fighting equals 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 two, then if it's true, win game, if it's false, defeat monster. Okay, after the lose function, we're going to create a new function called win game. And inside that function, we'll call the update function and pass in location six. So you can see it's going to look very similar to the lose function, where we're just calling location six. And that's a new location. So let's create a new location. Everything should basically be the same as the lose location, except the name's going to be win. And instead of saying you die, it will say you feed, defeat the dragon, you win the game. Just like that, the replay and restart are gonna be the same. Now the game could be complete now. We're gonna add a few extra features, but let's test it out. So I'm gonna click run up here, and we'll be able to see if we made any mistakes already. So uh, monster stats, unexpected identifier. So let's go to um, line 109, and it looks like 
it's because we forgot this curly brace, or I forgot it. Hopefully you got it right, because um, I probably put a little note at the time saying that I made a mistake there. Uh, so this is why it's sometimes helpful to test out your code more frequently, so you don't have a error a while back. So let's try it again. So I'll click Run. And then we have another error here, so let's check that. 144. And again, it's just a missing curly brace. And hopefully we don't get any more of those missing curly braces. Okay. And then we have a missing semicolon. So at um, 217, um, one thing this helps you realize is that finding errors can actually be easy just by looking at the console and the errors you get right in there. So it looks like we just need to have a semicolon here. Okay. And no more errors. I fix all my mistakes that hopefully you already had fixed in your code. Okay, so let's test out the rest of this application here. So, welcome to Dragon Repeller. So we have all this uh, information here, go to store. Oh, let's see if we can buy a weapon. Yep, my gold went down, and now I have an extra thing in my inventory. I can buy some health, and my gold went down, my health went up. Let's go down to Town Square, go to the cave. I'll fight the slime, name slime, health 15. You are fighting a monster, I am going to attack. And my health went down, my experience went up, and it tells right here what, what happened. So go to Town Square. I'm going to go to the cave again, fight the slime, attack. And now I have more gold. So I can go to the store and buy a better weapon. Now I have a claw hammer. So I'm going to go to the cave. And now I can fight the fang beast. And attack that a few times. I defeated it. Now let's just, I'm not going to check every single thing here. But let's check what happens if I fight the dragon and die. Attack. Okay, my health is going down quickly. I don't have the most powerful weapon yet. You die. See, my health went down. So if I replay, yep, it starts back over. You are on the town square. You see a sign that says store. Great. Everything seems to be working so far. Okay, let's... Do a few things to make the game even more interesting. Um, first of all, I'm going to close the console here. We don't need that anymore. I'm going to bring this over. And now, let's go to the attack function. So, in the attack function, we're going to change this line right here to something that's going to be a little more complicated, basically. So instead of just subtracting the level of the monster, we are going to um, get an attack value based on the level of the monster. So I'm going to um, put in a, I'm going to call a function here actually. So get monster attack value, and then I'm going to pass into the function the level of the monster. So we're passing in the level of the monster to this function. And this whole function is going to return a number that's going to be subtracted from the health. So let's create that function. So we're going to call that function. It's going to be right here. And it's going to take a level. So get monster attack value. It takes in a level here. And now the attack of the monster will be based on the monster's level and the player's XP. So, in this function, we'll use let to create a variable called hit, and we'll set it to uh, equal to an equation. Uh, let me just show you instead of explaining it to you first. So, you can experiment with different equations to figure out what the attack value is going to be. But in our case, we're doing, we're first we're multiplying the level of the monster times 5, and then we're subtracting... Well, we're getting a random number times XP, and then we are uh, rounding it down. 
So let's do a console.log. We're, we're going to log the value of this of hit to the console to use in debugging. This is something we talked about at the beginning, console.log. So do console.log and then pass in hit. And now we're going to do something we haven't done before in a function is to return a value. We already talked about how we're going to get the return value to pass into health, but we haven't created a function with the returned value yet. So we're going to return, we're just going to use the return keyword and then put hit. So just like this, return hit. Okay, so now when we call this function, it's going to return a value that we can then use in this health equation up here. Okay, now we want to make it so a player can potentially miss. When they go to attack, they can miss. So first of all, there's an extra semicolon here. Uh, so it, extra semicolons basically don't do anything. They're not, they're not going to make your, um, your code fail or anything. So we want to put this whole line in an if statement. So if, and then the condition of the if statement is going to, we're actually going to call a function to get the result to see if this is true or false. So we're going to say if is monster hit, is monster hit. And we're going to check if the monster's hit. And if so, then we are going to subtract from the health. And if the monster is not hit, we'll have an else, and we'll use the plus equal operator to add the text you miss onto the end of text.intertext. So it's just gonna look like that. So maybe I can even put some lines around here so we can see what happens. So if the monster is hit, we'll subtract this attack value. If not, you miss. Obviously, we now have to create the isMonsterHit function. We're going to use the math.random function to make it so 20% of the time it's a miss and 80% of the time it's a hit. So after the get monster attack value, I'll make another function, the other function. And this is how we're going to do that. isMonsterHit, we're going to return, and then we're going to do a conditional. Anytime you have a conditional, like more than, less than, more than or equal to, or like the double equal sign, the triple equal sign, it's always going to return a true or false. So math.random, if you remember, I said it gives a number between 0 and 1. So, so point 0.2, that's basically 20% of the time it's going to be 0.2 or less, and then 80% of the time it's going to be above that. So it's going to return when... Math, if math.random is greater than 0.2, that's 80% of the time, it's going to return true, otherwise false. So 80% uh, of the time, there's going to be a hit. Now, we want to actually, the player should hit if either math.random is greater than 0.2 or if the player's health is less than 20. So basically, it's always a hit if the player's health is less than 20. So let's look at how you can use an or in an if statement. So you can check for two conditions in an if statement. So we actually want to return true under two conditions. If math.random is greater than 0.2 or if the player's health is less than 20. So if the player has low health, there's always going to be a hit. So at the end of the return statement, we're going to add the logical or operator, which is just two straight lines. And then we can check if health is less than 20. So let me show you what I mean. So this is the two straight lines. This is the or operator. So we're checking for this or this. So if either one of these is true, then it's going to return true. We could also use the AND operator. If you two, do two ampersigns, that would be saying both of these have to be true to return true. And if either one is false, then it returns false. But we're going to go back to the, the, or, the, the OR operator. Okay, now let's add another thing. So for the attack, we're going to make it so on every attack, there's a small chance that the player's weapon breaks. 
So at the end of the attack function, we're going to add an if expression with the condition math.random is greater than or equal to 0.1. So let's go down here. Okay, now we'll use the plus equal operator to add your, and then it's going to say the first item in the inventory array, your weapon breaks. And it's going to add that to the end of inner.text. And we can use inventory.pop to both remove the last element from the array and return the element. Let me show you what I mean. So right in here, text enter text plus equals your, and then we're using um, a string concatenation with the plus, your, and now we do inventory.pop. This is both going to remove an item, remove the final item in the array, and return it so it appears in the string here, breaks. So it's not going to be in the inventory anymore, and we get to see what the item is. And now we can next decrement the value of current weapon. So we'll just do that with current weapon minus minus. But we never want the player's only weapon to break. So, so well, let's use the logical and operator, which I was talking about earlier, to add a second condition to the if expression we just wrote. If a player's weapon, a player's weapon should only be able to break if inventory.length does not equal one. So you can do does not equal with an with an exclamation point before the double equal sign. So so let's see that. So we're using the the and the ampersand ampersand for and and then this is the does not equal. So there's two conditions. Both conditions have to be true. Math.random has to be less than or equal to 0.1 and also the inventory.length should not equal one. So for not equal, you can either, this is the not equal that's equivalent to three equal signs, and this is the not equal that's equivalent to two equal signs. It's, for the most part, you should use the, the one that's equivalent to the three equal signs. So we're checking for both though, it, it can't just be one or the other, both have to be true for the inventory item to break. Let's do a quick test and see if we can get our our inventory our item to break. So if I just go to K, I'm just going to keep um, fighting the slime until we hopefully well actually we can, we have to buy first we have to buy it go to the store I forgot we have to buy the weapon and then we can see if we can get it that to break. So we'll go to the cave. Um, it we may have to do it quite a few times to get it to break. Your dagger breaks. It happened. Well, you know, so what we kind of got lucky, or I guess unlucky, to get it to break. So, so our dagger breaks, and now we only have a knife, or a stick, or whatever the first one was. <laughs> so, so that's actually working correctly. So, uh, everything's working basically how we want. There's just one more thing to do, which is to add a mini game Easter egg, basically a hidden feature of the game. And really, this is just a reason to be able to teach you one last part of JavaScript. So at the end, we'll add another function called Easter egg, and it's going to call the update function and passes in locations seven. So we'll add that at the very end. Easter egg location seven. And then we're going to have to add the new location for the Easter egg. It's going to have a name of Easter egg and the button text is going to be two, eight, or go to town square. And the functions are going to be pick two, pick eight, or go to town. And then the text is going to be, you find a secret game, pick a number above 10 numbers will be randomly chosen between zero and 10. If the number you choose matches one of the random numbers, you win. So we'll just add that and you can See that text here? Basically, you can only choose two or eight for, for the numbers. So now we just have to add the code that's going to randomly choose these numbers between zero and 10. But first, let's create the, the pick two and pick eight functions. And each function is gonna call 
the pick function, which we sought to create, and pass either a 2 or an 8 into the pick function, depending on the function name. So we'll just go down and add those functions. Pick 2, what's well, going to pick 2, or pick A is going to pick 8. And then the final thing is to create the pick function. So let's create that function. So function pick, and obviously it's going to need a guess. And then what's going to happen in this function? Well, first let's create a, a new variable called numbers, and it's going to be an empty array. So let numbers, and it's going to equal this empty array. And we're going to push numbers onto this array using a while loop. So we're going to talk about two different types of loops in this section. The first is a while loop, and a while loop will keep doing something while a condition is true. So a, a while loop, it, it, start, it starts off looking kind of like a, an if statement. So we're going to do while, and there's going to be a condition. We'll fill that in in a second. And then there's going to be some code in between these curly braces. So the condition we want to put in is while numbers.length is less than 10. So numbers.length is less than 10. So it's going to, it's the, right now the length is zero. So while it's less than 10, it's going to do something. So we want to push an item onto this array. So we'll do numbers.push. So numbers.push, and then we're going to put what item we want to put on. And here we're going to create a random number between 1 and 11, or 1 and 10. So to create a number, a random number, there's a, basically a formula. We've already kind of discussed, we've already discussed the formula, but we're going to do math.random to get a random number between 0 and 1, and we multiply it by 11. So now if we just round this down, because it's going to, it's, it's going to have a decimal, so we'll do math.floor, this will give us a random number between 1 and 10 to put onto the numbers list. So there, there's definitely different ways we could have created this list, but I wanted to demonstrate how to use a while loop. So while this condition is true, while there's less than 10 numbers, we will run this code. And then after this code pushes the 10th number onto the list, the 10th random number, it will go back to the condition again, and it won't be true anymore, so we'll pop out of the while loop and go to the next line of code. And the next line of code is we are going to display using the text under text. We're going to set it to equal you picked and then put what they picked. Here are the random numbers. One thing I just added to the end of this is an escape character. So with this backslash in, that's the that's the how you say new line. So if you want to add a new line right in the string, you can use the the escape character the backslash n and it will it will add a new line to the into the string and let me just add a few semicolons here okay now we're going to talk about a new type of loop called a for loop again it's going to be set up just like the while loop at first so we're going to have the for that's the keyword there's going to be parentheses and then we're going to have the brackets or the curly braces so we're going to run this code in here based on what's in these parentheses so there's going to be three items in these parentheses each separate with a semicolon so first we're going to initialize a variable so first we're going to initialize a variable then we're going to put the condition that we're looking for for the variable to have before, we, before we're done with the for loop. And then we are going to be able to change the variable. So uh, let me show you what I mean. We'll do let i equal 0 semicolon i less than 10 semicolon i plus plus. So let's go over this. So first, when this when we go into this for loop, we're creating a new variable just for the for loop. Since we use let, it's only going to apply in this block of code. And we are going to loop until i is less than 10. So once i is, i is less than 10, we'll be out of the loop. 
And this is something that's going to run at the end of each iteration of the loop, i++. That just means i equals i plus one. So i is gonna start at zero, and then every at the end of each iteration of the loop, it's going to go up one. And once i is, and it's actually, basically it's it's while, while i, why I is less than 10, it's going to keep looping. So while i is less than 10, it's gonna keep looping, and once i is no longer less than 10, the loop will be over. We are just going to use this loop to add a to add all the numbers from our list and it will put a new line character after each number on the list so just like that so we'll do plus equal numbers and so when we do numbers i so first it's going to be uh, so i is going to be updated each time we go through this loop so the first time we go through the loop, i is going to equal zero. So this is going to be the number, this is the number here, at, at index zero, which is the first number. And then i will be updated, and then it'll be index one, index two, index three, until the loop is over with. And at, after each number, we will put a new line. Okay, so now we have our final section. We are gonna put an if-else statement. We want to figure out if the number that was picked is in this list. Well, there, there's a kind of a fancy way we can do that. So first let's create the if statement. So if, so we're gonna put the condition here. We are going to find the index of the guest number. So we can do numbers.index of, and we can pass in the guess. So in this case, it's going to either be two or eight, but we can use this function for any for a guess of any type of number. So we're trying to find the index of it. Of it. We're looking for that number in the numbers array, and we're trying to find the index. So, either, you know, the index starts with zero, one, two, three, four. So which part of the array, which order in the array is that number? But if the number, so this is always going to return an, a number, but if the number if, is not in the array, if it cannot find the index of that guess, it's going to return negative one. So we can use that. So if the index of guess does not equal negative one, that means it's in the list. That means you guessed a correct number. So we're going to do the does not equal and then put negative one. So in that case, we are going to set inner text to, right, you win 20 gold. We're gonna add 20 gold and we're gonna update the inner text of the gold. Just like that, to plus equal, right, you win 20 gold. We're gonna add to the gold and then update the inner text of the gold. Else, it's going to say wrong, you lose 10 health. We're gonna subtract 10 health and we are going to set the inner text of the health. So it's gonna look uh, just like that. Uh, let's put the other curly brace here. And anytime you subtract health, we have to check if the player has lost. So that's what we'll do now. See if you can figure out what code you should add to if the player has died. Well, it's gonna be just like this. If health is less than or equal to zero, lose. Okay, we are done. The only other thing we need to do is make it so you can get into this Easter egg. So how we're gonna make it so you can get into the Easter egg is we're gonna go back up to the locations. And during the, the kill monster, once you've killed the monster, it's gonna say, go to town square, go to town square, go to town square. But we're not going to use the same functions for each of these. The final function, we're gonna do Easter egg. So even though it says go to town square, if you know the Easter egg, you're gonna to go to the Easter egg function. Okay, so now there's nothing more else to add. So let's just try out the Easter egg. I'm gonna to go to run, and we know that if we go to the cave, 
we know. Okay, now let's just check out. Oh, yeah, we got. Obviously, there's some sort of error we have to fix here. So let's go to uh, line 100. And. Oh, when we added, when I add Easter egg, I somehow deleted that curly brace. Okay, so now I'm going to first. I'll just go to the store, buy a weapon. Now I'm gonna go to the cave, fight the slime, attack. Okay, now I'm gonna click the third go to town square. Oh yeah, and while we're doing it, you can see in the console it's putting. Uh, the 10 here, because if you remember, we did do a console.log uh, when there was an attack. Uh, where was that? Here, where we console.log the hit. So, but I'm going to click the third go to town square. You find a secret game. Pick a number above. 10 more numbers will be randomly chosen between 0 and 10, and then if you choose them, if the number you choose matches one of the random numbers, you win. So I'm going to click 8. You picked 8. Here are the random numbers. Uh, let me just turn off this console. Right! You win 20 gold because 8 was in there. And then if I choose the wrong, because I can play again. So you pick 2. Right! I got it right that time. Right again. Oh man, I'm on a roll here. Wrong! You lose 10 health. So I tried too many times. Uh, so now I can go to Town Square. The game is complete. <laughs>